Hello again, this is a very good example of how to use group theory in solid state physics. We are going to analyze the band structure of a 2D square lattice in the delta direction. And we want to look at what happens when we apply a potential. So a 2D square lattice looks something like this, where we have uh, a lattice constant A in both, di both directions. So the first Brion zone should look again like a square and here we have the gamma point, here we have the m point, the x point, this is the delta direction, this is what we're going to analyze. Here is sigma and here is z. This we call the x hat direction and this we call the y hat direction. So for any reciprocal lattice vector k uh, this one can be written as 2 pi over a assigned with two indices L1 and L2 which lie in the z numbers. So and for a vector k in the first Brion zone any vector k can be written as a sum of the two basis vectors multiplied by parameters theta and nu which lie in one half in the interval minus one half to one half. So we have a theorem that states that plane waves are a good choice for wave functions and this makes it possible to prove Bloch theorem which gives us an expression for symmetry adapted wave functions. So th this is a plane wave at a special k point times a function which is where this function u which depends on k and r is periodic. So if we fix any specific k point in our Brion zone, we can write our wave function depending on L1 and L2 of R as e to the i k plus our reciprocal lattice times R. And this gives us an energy which depends on L1 and L2 which is h bar squared over 2 ma k plus our reciprocal lattice squared. So this is basically enough to sketch, to make a first attempt of our band structure where this is a k direction, this is pi over a, this is zero, so we start here at the gamma point we move along the delta direction arrive at the x point and here we uh, on this axis we we uh, draw the energy in terms of 2 m a over h bar squared so if this is 1 and this is 2 then by choosing different l1s and l2s we can sketch the band structure. For example, this is for zero for the L vector zero zero. Then this is for example for the L vector minus one zero. Then we have a double degeneracy right here to five quarters for zero plus minus one. And here again the same double degeneracy for minus one plus minus one and here to nine quarters we have the band of one zero. This is only of choosing different L vectors and calculating our points at or our energies at specific K points. To know what happens when we apply a potential we have to assign our irreducible representations to our specific bands what we see here. So for this we need to assign uh, groups, point groups corresponding to 
the little groups of our specific points right here. And what we have is that the group, the point group corresponding to the gamma point is C4V. The point group corresponding to the delta direction is C1H and the point group corresponding to our x point is C2V. This should be seen very clearly. Now we can look at our character tables right here. I wrote them down already because you should know how to obtain them. So this is our group C4. We, we, we have four different five different contiguity classes, five different representations here. We denote them with gamma. C2V has four different contiguity classes and four different um, irreducible representations and C1H has only the identity and the parity representation. This is what you should know already. Now we can look at the energy at our gamma point at zero. At this point we have a wave function zero, zero, which is one everywhere. This wave function one transforms just as a wave symmetry adapted wave function of our representation gamma one. We can do the same thing for the energy one. Here we obtain different wave functions. We obtain cosine of 2 pi x over a plus cosine 2 pi y over a. We obtain cosine 2 pi x over a minus cosine 2 pi y over a. And we obtain a vector sine of 2 pi x over a co uh, sine of 2 pi y over a. Now we see that this here, this, uh, this wave function again corresponds to the uh, irreducible representation of gamma 1. This wave function behaves like gamma 3 and this one of course you can see it clearly is like gamma 5. Maybe uh, to look at it in a little more depth here we have uh, the wave function 1 0 minus minus 1 0 here we have 0 1 minus 0 minus 1. So what do you know from this? Well, you can only you can only now write down this here is uh, gamma one. This here, uh, this point consists of gamma one, gamma three, and gamma five. But this is very much in in fact. So I will show you why you can deduce a lot of things from that. Because you can assign compatibility relations between your f uh, three different point groups. When you look at your character tables, you can know which irreducible representation can, can go into another irreducible representations by looking at the character assigned to the different specific point group operations. So for example, gamma 1. Gamma 1 can go into delta 1 because of course this is again the identity representation and delta 1 can go into x1. If you have gamma 3, for example, gamma 3 has also for the identity and for the mirror plane the same positive value, so it can go into delta 1 and delta 1 can also go to x3 and for gamma 5 the same is true as well. So you can do a similar graph for gamma 2, gamma 4 and gamma 5 which can uh, go into delta 2, the parity as well as x2 and x4. This can tell you what happens to your gamma 1 representation when moving along the delta direction. It means that it can only turn into the delta 1 representation. And this one can't change, so here we have another delta 1 representation. But the first thing we want to discuss is what happens around here, because we call it a delta x representation. Out of which deltas does this delta x representation consist of? We want to look at this. So we close again this one right here, so you have the character tables, and we look at specifically the delta x representation, which is this one over here. 0 plus minus 1. 
So what you want to look at is the matrix element of the wave function. So what if if you have the wave function 0, 1, you have an operator right here, we call it omega, and then you have 0, 1, so we, I've rather done the complete matrix element here again, the operator omega 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1, omega 0, 1, 0 minus 1, omega 0 minus 1. So, for omega being equal to the identity, we of course recover the identity matrix. For omega being equal to the mirror plane in the uh, x axis, we recover this kind of matrix. This tells you immediately that the character of your delta x representation for the element of the identity is equal to 2 and the character of your delta x uh, representation of the element sigma x is equal to 0. So what you have right here is, look over here, here's, is it happening? You have it delta x, here you have a 2 and here you have a 0. So this means by the decomposition theorem that delta x is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2. You can write that over here, delta 1 plus delta 2. In a similar manner you can discover uh, other irreducible representations in your graph. For example here you have x1 and x3 and here again you have x1, x2, x3 and x4 and you can kind of go through that whole graph and write down your irreducible representation to your specific points. Now, I take that away again. Now we look at the real band structure when having a potential being applied. Here you have the energy again in units of 2ma over h bar square. And here you have the k direction where this is pi over a and this is zero. So you have here your x point. So here you start off with gamma one. And gamma one arrives, takes delta, the delta one path and arrives here at x one. The interesting thing over here is because this consists out of two different irreducible representations. In general, they will split when having a potential being applied. Then you have again delta 1, which arrives at gamma 3 over here. Then here we have again a split for the next delta 1. And delta 1 and delta 2 split in general as well. So here you have delta 3, uh, x3, x2, then you have x1 and x4. Now you have here a band crossing. This is again your uh, delta 1 representation and here this band consists of delta 1 and delta 5, uh, delta 2. Delta 1 and delta 2 can cross but delta 1 and delta 1 can't. So what happens over here is you start off with your, this is your uh, gamma 5 representation so this point can survive when having a delta 1 representation sticking out of it. So what happens here is that band and the other one coming from over here where this is 2 and this is roughly 1, the other band coming from over here, the other delta 1 band, they they do this kind of stuff. So they are not allowed to touch. Whereas the delta 2 band, the delta 2 band is allowed to cross the delta 1 band. So this is how your band structure looks in general when a potential is being applied. I hope this wasn't too long and I hope it was uh, kind of clear to you. If it isn't, please don't hesitate to send me an email and I will redo th this video. This is kind of the uh, my favorite example and I want to make it complete and as compact as possible. Thank you for watching. See you next week.